Welcome to the Wow Factor Business Podcast with host Alinda Knox. This is the podcast that's designed with a beginner in mind. Linda and her special guest help you as you travel along on your entrepreneurial journey by offering words of hope, words to enlighten, and words to inspire you to launch and persevere. And now, here's your host, Linda Knox. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this session of the Wow Factor Business Podcast with me, your host, Linda Knox. This is the podcast that is designed with a beginner in mind. So if you're just getting started in your entrepreneurial journey or whatever it is your special calling is in life, this is the place to be. Well, I am flying solo again today. Actually, I have a few um, sessions that I'll be doing part A and part B. These are sessions that I did actually a few months ago, but they're still evergreen. I'll be talking about website addresses and URLs and web extensions and how much does it cost to get a website domain and domain names and all that good stuff. So this is part one. It's going to be kind of short, but as I said before, it is pretty um, evergreen. The only thing, the only changes here is that um, I think somewhere at the end of the podcast, I make mention I say something about be sure to contact us on um, iTunes. And for those of you who may or may not know, uh, iTunes, if you want to listen to a podcast, they have, it's called Apple Podcast now, uh, which is different than iTunes. And they do have several podcatchers. Some of you may have heard me use the term podcatchers. That's just a way of saying this. these are ways that you can listen to your podcast. You can listen to a podcast on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on Stitcher, on Overcast, CastBox, Beyond Pod, Pocket Cast, iHeartRadio. There are a million ways. And I think somebody said that Pandora is going to soon be a part of this. So for those of you um, who may or may not know, if you're new to listening to this um, podcast, I want to say welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, but there may be those of you who don't know a whole lot about podcasts. They are getting more popular now. It's just a fancy way. To me, I think it's like internet radio, so to speak. But um, you're getting more and more podcasters and more and more listeners. So by all means, please be sure to subscribe. It's just a lot easier to to listen to one of the podcasts when you're subscribed because then you're, you're notified when a new session comes out. So like I said, this is uh, a two-part. We're going to be talking about web addresses and URLs. I want you to really be seriously considering getting your own website if you uh, don't already have one. I um, am working on Facebook Live sessions where I want to be doing kind of like mini training things that will be leading up to talking more about um, web design, web pages, blogs, and things like that. I mean, they're going to be just snippets and many types of um, informational pieces. I don't know what else you want to call it, how you want to <laughs> describe it. And this is one of the reasons why I don't have quite as many podcasts up and recorded. I know at the beginning of the, these podcasts, I said that I'd be doing a weekly podcast, and that is still true. I'm lagging behind because I am really trying to do, I've got maybe too many irons in the fire. I'm trying to do several things. So um, I will get caught up and we'll get back to our regular weekly podcast. But but for now, thank God I did have some things that I had already pre-recorded. And I said, as I said, this is evergreen, talking about uh, websites and web addresses. So I hope that you enjoy part one of this session entitled Choosing a Website Address. Enjoy. Today's session, um, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about website addresses, and in particular, naming your website. Maybe you already have a website, and maybe you're thinking about getting a second one. I just want to throw around a couple of ideas here. This will be a short session. This is actually a two-part session. The next session, we're going to be talking a little bit more about website extensions and what make up for a website and URLs and the fees involved. But today, this will be pretty quick. I just want to give you a couple examples. 
And in order to illustrate some of the ideas and some of the things that I want to bring about today, I, I've invented a few fictitious people. I have um, a person called Susie Q. Susie Q is a children's clothing designer. And poor Susie here is at the dilemma of trying to figure out what to name her website. Now, since she sells and designs children's clothes, she doesn't know if she should name it Susie's Clothes for Kids or Susie's Fashions for Children or leave her name out of it altogether and name it something like One of a Kind Susie's Fashions. It could have your name in it, not have your name in it, be a long website name, a short website name. It's whatever you want. But if you want to have a greater chance of being found in Google or if you don't want to turn people off by having them type in some monstrous website address, you should give some thought as to what your website name should be. Some of the things to consider would be, let's say, looking for websites that are similar to what it is that your product or your service is. In Susie's case, she might want to try looking at a website for other children's clothes designers, especially those designers that are ranking really high in the search engine. Take a look at what they've named their websites by searching, say, something like children's clothes designs. What would show up first? And if you did a Google search, what would show up? Do the websites include the personal name of the owner? Do they include any of the words that you actually typed into the search? Just as an experiment, you should, you know, write out several of the search names or phrases that you would think people would use to try to find you out or search you out. So if you sold hats, what would you like to put into a search engine to see if somebody sold women's hats or men's hats or men's shoes or if you wanted to purchase a car? Search it out in, in Google or whatever your search engine is and, and see what ranks, you know, what comes up first. Did the person use their name? Did they use the actual product in their name? These are just some ideas. It may or may not make any difference in your particular business, but do that just as, a, as an experiment and a, a project. Just that, and just as an aside, there are many things that search engines like Google take into consideration for ranking a site high, such as the age of the site, or in other words, the longer that the site or your website has been around. They also look at, which is probably number one, great content. You know, nothing beats having good information on your site. Put the type of information on your site that people need and are looking for. And also backlinks. This is when other websites link to your site. They share your site with other sites. There are a lot more things that can rank you high in search engines, but this is actually for another session. Something else to consider when you're thinking of trying to name your website address is the association with your brand. If you want to be naming something, such as in Susie Q's case where she has uh, children's clothing, it's a good idea to put children's clothes or kid cl kids' clothes, but it should be something, which is pretty obvious, associated with your brand. You don't have to do that, but here again, it may help you as far as uh, somebody's trying to search you out. In my case, for the example, let's say, of this podcast, it's W-O-H-W, Factor Business Podcast. Now, the WOW is a play on the word or the, uh, the word WOW. W-O-H-W is an acronym, and I wanted it to sound like WOW, WOW Factor. And then, of course, business, I wanted to have business in there. This talks about businesses, ministries, and other things, but it's primarily a business podcast. So... I use the Wow Factor Business Podcast in hopes that it will help with my search in other uh, podcatchers such as iTunes, um, Stitcher, and some of the other platforms where people would listen to the podcast. Hopefully, this will help people find if they're looking in a, a podcatcher like iTunes, they'd be able to find me by searching out business podcasts. One of the things that I did do and you could do the same, is, as I said, W-O-H-W is supposed to simulate the sound of WOW, W-O-W. So I did purchase the domain name 
W-O-W as well, Wow Factor Business Podcast, in case somebody did type that in. And then it points to a redirect of the actual um, site where I have all of my show notes and everything. So that's an idea, too, when you're thinking about naming. You have a long name. You might want to even try to shorten it a little bit and then take the shorter name and redirect it to your actual website. These are just some ideas and some things that you might consider when actually naming your own website or deciding what your own website address should be. Okay, and here's a, another example. In this example, let's say I'm going to make up somebody by the name of Dan. Let's say Dan has a, a website design business and an online consulting business. So he wants to combine the two, and he's decided that he should use the website address as www.danswebsiteandonlinemarketingconsultingbusiness.com. Need I say that? <laughs> That's very, 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 very long. So he might want to consider shortening it to say something like www.danswebconsulting.info or .com or something similar but, sh- but shorter. And here again, if he's just insistent upon having that long address, do something shorter and then maybe have it redirected to the other website. Again, you want to make it easy for people to find you, but nobody really wants to type in a million characters to get to your site. So give it some thought when you're thinking about uh, your website address. Okay, and one last thing about the length of your URL or your website address is they do have several services out there. Um, I call them URL shortening services, such as bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y, and Pretty Link is a WordPress plugin. These are some of the most popular ones. They do have other ones out there, but these are things that kind of help you to shorten your URL name. And they're really useful, especially where the character space that you have to use is short. You don't have much real estate, such as in Twitter. They help you to shorten the, um, the website URL itself. A real nice thing about Bitly is that they give you stats. Let's say that you email a Bitly link to several people. Bitly can give you statistics as to who clicked on your link. So that's that's a pretty nice feature. Some of the other ones may do the same, but I think Bitly is my favorite. There are differences when it comes to using a URL shortener like Bitly as opposed to having a shorter website name. But, you know, if you really don't want to have to go through all the hassle of trying to get it shorter, it's, it's really just best to give it a whole lot of thought and if at all possible, make it shorter. It doesn't have to be extremely short, but you really want to avoid any real lengthy, lengthy website names. And again, something that stands true to your brand, something that when people think, oh, this is so-and-so's uh, cupcake house or so-and-so's car repair place or Anyway, try to get it as close to what it is your goods and services has to offer. Okay, that's about it for this session. I told you it would be a very short session today. But before we go, I want to talk about MOVE, making your move, your minutes of visionary energy. I want you to utilize your move, your minutes of visionary energy. Take just a couple minutes out today, tomorrow, next week. But I want you to do the following. If you haven't already done so, sit down and brainstorm and try to come up with a domain name that would best suit your business. Just sit down and brainstorm, come up with a couple of ideas. Keep in mind several of the things discussed on this podcast, such as choosing a name and keeping with your brand. When you found several possible names, try searching for those names or terms in Google or other search engines. If you find a name that you know you really want to use someday, but aren't really exactly sure when you might be using it, go ahead and register it anyway and just set it aside because you don't want somebody else to snatch that up um, later on. So just go ahead and register. It only takes a couple, you only have to pay a couple dollars just to pay for it and set the name aside until you're ready to actually use it. I've added a worksheet. Just go to www.thewowfactorbusinesspodcast.com and you can use that worksheet as you work on 
naming your or picking some names, possible website names. Okay, that's it for this session. Be sure to tune into the next session. Remember, there's a part two to this. And I'll dive into and examine what makes for a URL or uniform resource locator. And just why, oh why, oh why, do we have to pay a yearly fee to own our name? Until next time, be blessed.